vector valued functions and motion in space. When any particle moves in a plane or space, it traces a path. In other words, the locus of a moving particle gives us a particular type of curve. At a given time t, its position can be given by the coordinates x, t, y, t in a plane and if the particle is moving in the space, its position is given by its uh, position is given by the coordinates x t y t z t. Here x t y t z t are functions of t and are real valued functions. As t changes, the position of particle also changes, and that too in a particular direction. So we write the position of the particle at time t in the space as a position vector r t, given by r t is x t i plus y t j plus z t k and in a plane as r t is equal to x t i plus y t j. In the figure we can see a moving particle let's say is at the point p at time t then it can be found by its coordinates x t y t and let's say at time t dash the particle is at the point p dash then it's given by the coordinates x t dash y t dash. Let's look at an example. A, a moving particle has the position vector r t is cos t i plus sin t j and we want to find the path of the moving particle. We first eliminate t. For that we need to know what are x t and y t. We, the the Function associated with the unit vector i is x t and the function associated with the unit vector j is y t. So here x t is cos t and y t is sin t. If we square and add both of them we can eliminate t and we get x square plus y square is equal to 1 which shows that the particle is moving in a circular motion or along a circle of radius 1. And how did we get the radius here? The magnitude of the vector rt is 1. We can see this in the figure. The coordinates of the point P are x t y t which means cos t sin t. Let's look at another example. Now here rt gives the position vector of a moving particle in the space. If we want to know what is the path the moving particle traces, we will first find x t, y t and z t. We see x t is cos t, y t is sin t, z t is t. Now we have to again eliminate t. We start with x and y and if we square and add, we get x square plus y square is equal to 1. That is the particle is moving in the plane in a circular path and the radius of this circle is 1. Now as zt is t, it means that the particle is also gaining height. So we can always think of this as wrapping a thread around a solid cylinder. Uh, or we can, or spring is also a good example. Now, if t value increases from 0 to 2 pi, the thread will complete one round. And with another increase from 2 pi to 4 pi, it will take another round. But the circle would have gained height. Such a curve is known as a helix. Here, in this figure, in this slide, we have two figures. The first one gives us the position vector rt as cos ti plus sin tj plus tk. And in the second one, we see that rt is cos of 2ti plus sin of 2tj plus 2tk. In the second position vector, t is a multiple of 2. And that shows that in the figure you can see the curves are closely packed.
how do we define velocity speed and acceleration vectors so velocity is given by vt and if rt is the position vector of a moving particle along a smooth curve then velocity vector vt is nothing but the rate of change of the position vector rt it is also written as dr by dt and it will always be tangential to the curve and in the direction of the motion if we take magnitude of the velocity we get speed coming to acceleration it's denoted by the vector at and it is nothing but the rate of change of velocity so we write it as dt by d by dt of vt which is nothing but d2r by dt square the direction of motion at any time t is given by the unit vector vt by mod of vt velocity is nothing but the product of speed and direction we can see v of t is mod of vt which is speed multiplied by the direction which is vt by mod of vt let's take one example here rt is the position vector of a moving particle and we have to find the equation of the path traced by this particle we also have to find velocity and acceleration vectors and sketch them on the graph of the path at the given time t is equal to ln of 2 we can see here xt is 1 by 4 e to the power 2t and yt is e to the power t after we eliminate t we get y square is 4x we know that this is the equation of a parabola so the particle is moving in a parabolic path at t is equal to ln 2 the position vector rt is i plus 2j this we got by substituting t is equal to ln 2 and this will be the first step then we find velocity vt by differentiating rt and when we substitute t is equal to ln 2 we get v at ln 2 is 2i plus 2j when we differentiate the velocity vector vt we get the acceleration vector and on substituting t is equal to ln 2 we get a ln 2 is nothing but 4i plus 2j if you want to find the angle theta between velocity and acceleration vector we use the formula cos t is v dot a cos theta is equal to v dot a upon mod v mod of a in our case cos theta becomes dot product of the velocity vector 2i plus 2j and 4i plus 2j the acceleration vector divided by the magnitude this comes out to be 0.95 and this gives us theta is equal to 20 degrees so if we see the figure we first draw the parabolic path then we will find what is what are the coordinates at t is equal to ln 2 that is what is r of ln 2 we see it is i plus 2j that is the coordinates are 1 2 so we have marked that point then at that we draw the velocity and acceleration velocity vector was 2i plus 2j both coefficients of i and j are positive so we draw the velocity vector pointing towards the positive x axis and same is the case with acceleration as acceleration is 4i plus 2j we have drawn acceleration in the direction of positive x axis the angle between the two is 20 degrees we have to note here acceleration is always in the direction of change of velocity and in case of circular motion acceleration is always towards the center 
and the angle between velocity and acceleration is 90 degrees. In this example, the position vector of a moving particle is given by 3 cos t by 2i plus 3 sin t by 2j. We have to again find velocity and acceleration vectors and sketch them on the graph of the part of the moving particle at the given time t is equal to pi. So now if we square and add them x and y, we get x square plus y square is equal to 9, which tells us that the path is a circle of radius 3. If we differentiate rt, we get vt as minus 3 by 2 sin t by 2i plus 3 by 2 cos t by 2 j. And acceleration is minus 3 by 4 cos t by 2i plus 3 by 4 sin t by 2 j. At t is equal to pi, rt is 3j and v at pi is minus 3 by 2i and acceleration is minus 3 by 4j. We can see cos of theta that is the angle between velocity and acceleration is 0 which means theta is equal to pi by 2. Velocity and acceleration are orthogonal. If we look at the figure we first point the position of r. We first plot the position of our vector rt. rt was given to be 3j. It means the coordinates are 0, 3. So this is the point. Now at this point we will draw the velocity vector. Velocity vector was minus 3 by 2i. So it means the coefficient of i is negative. Hence we have directed a velocity vector towards the negative direction of x-axis. And acceleration is pointing towards the center. So we can see it is pointing towards the center and here the angle between the two we can see is 90 degrees. So the acceleration and velocity are orthogonal. Acceleration vector was minus 3 by 4j and hence it's pointing towards the negative y axis. Thank you for watching.